My big brother said, I got a surprise for you. I want to take you to some place I think you're going to like. So we go in to a hotel and I look around and there's people wandering around in costumes. Wow! And I said, what is this? And he goes, well, it's a convention. And I went, oh, okay. What's a convention? And he says, it's a place where like-minded people get together to share experiences. Let me give you some background about who I am. I am essentially a 13-year-old boy. I am. I'm a 13-year-old type 2 bipolar, which means that I have periods of mania, which means I'm hyper and excitable. And then the other times I'm depressed. I'm sad, I know, I'm, I'm not feeling crash. It's terrible. Now, most of the time, at a convention, I'm in manic mode, which works well. Because you see, what I've done is I've taken what some people might see as a, as a disability or an issue, and I've worked it to my advantage. Whenever I'm about to go on stage, I find myself nervous and, and overwhelmed with fear, frankly. I mean, it's scary to get on a stage, and it's scary every single time. But the difference is, is it kicks my mania in. So when I hit the stage, I'm brilliant. At least I think so. There is no roadmap to becoming a professional master of ceremonies. There just isn't. I tried to find one because I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I hate to work. <laughs> I do. If it's work, I don't want to do it, which is why I love what I do. I don't work. When you find the thing that you love to do, and you can do it without any thought, without uh, of it being, okay, how much am I getting paid? All right, how long do I have to do this? Those are the two questions. If you have to ask those two questions because of the job, not because of your circumstances, then you're doing the wrong job. You know, and people, what do you want to do with your life? I don't know. And that's fine. I was 30. 30 before Peter Pixie was invented. You want to live an incredible life, you have to do it. It's your life, it's nobody else's. And I can show you some of the things I've done, but in the end, you've got to step up, it's your world. So I'm gonna ask you real quick, what is it? The silly thing that when you were seven that you wanted to grow up and be, no matter what it was, unless you want to be a butterfly, that might be a little difficult to do, but not impossible. There are ways to do it. We do cosplay a lot here. So, what is it you wanted to grow up to be? You want a unique, marketable skill that's yours and nobody else's? Get in the top 5% of one thing and the top 25% of the other. Put those two things together and you are somebody that nobody else is. You have something that nobody else can truly market that you can make a difference with. Now, I didn't know when I was a kid what I wanted to be. Actually, that's not true. What I wanted to be when I grew up was a Time Lord. Now let me share something with you. What the doctor does is, is he goes to uh, different worlds, he experiences different people, he travels with a companion, he has a cool ride, and, uh, and he runs a lot. So I can tell you, I grew up to be a Time Lord, ladies and gentlemen, but I just didn't know it. That, and that's my point. No matter what it is you want to be, the opportunity really is there there is, no, there is no trial run, ladies and gentlemen. There is no practice. You don't get your 20s back. You don't get to redo them. <laughs> so make it a point to be the person you want to be as soon as you can, and you will find that your life is filled with greatness because you put it there. The single most uh, killer that will be for anything you want to do in your life is your own ego because I'm either too good for that, or you know what, I'm not good enough for that. How I got to be Peter Pixie is a Rocky Horror Picture Show shadow cast needed a host, and I became that person. I need, I need to talk about Rocky Horror, because I really, for, for a long time, was mad at Rocky Horror Picture Show, and when I explained to you that because of Rocky, I, I have my son. Because of Rocky, I have my job. I even got to act, direct, write, and produce all the things I wanted to do when I grew up, but in ways that I had no idea would happen. I felt cheated, in fact, because there's theater, there is off-Broadway theater, there's regional theater, local theater, dinner theater, high school theater, and then there's the Rocky Horror Picture Show Shadowcast down here. <laughs> and, and I ran the cast, but the problem was it was Rocky Horror Shadowcast, and I was bitter about that because it's like I wanted to go to New York, become a famous director. How cool would that be? And here I am with this Rocky Horror Picture Shadowcast. If you take 
I'm not good enough or am I good enough out of the equation, that changes the dynamic of everything. Because then it's just a matter of how do I do it? The greatest question any person in the entire world can ever ask themselves is this, what would I do if I could not fail? We live in a world where we are taught to stop playing early. We are, you know, so why don't you go out and play? Go out and play. Go and, how many times do you hear this? Okay, go out and play. Go and play. Go and play. Go and play. Then one day they're like, what are you doing? I'm playing. Aren't you too old for that? Well, that's the problem, folks, is if you don't know what it is you want to do, you've not played enough. Just go out and try things. It doesn't matter what it is. You could be terrible at it. Who cares? Try it. Do it. Go out and play. Dress up. Do things. Find what catches you. I like that. I want to do more of that. And do it until it's not fun. Then find something else to do. One day this may be no more fun for me. And I promise you that when that happens, when I think, all right, are they paying me enough? At that point, I know that I'm doing the wrong thing. I look for the positive. And that makes my world a very positive and happy place because I'm making people happy. That's really all we want is to make a difference and be recognized for that difference. And if somebody smiles at you because you said something nice, you have made a difference in the world and it changes you immediately. Having shared all these things and told you where I see the future of how to get happy and how to be in a life that you can do, I want to tell you that uh, this last month, my mother passed away. Now, I know that's sad, but and I want to tell you a story about that because it's important to put things in context. My mother also was a bipolar, but undiagnosed. And in the 70s, getting help for uh, issues like that wasn't something that the poor people did. That was something people with money did. When I was seven, uh, she left. I was then in Wichita, Kansas. From all my friends, my whole life, it was terrible, devastated, destroyed everything in my life. But because I was in Wichita, Kansas, I ended up going to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And because of Rocky Horror Picture Show, I met my first wife, which I, I have a son who's 20 something from her. I would not have had that if my mother had not had her issues and created all this havoc in my life. I would not later then meet my second wife. I would not have raised three children. I would certainly not be Peter Pixie. I would not be standing here right now. Context is important. So I get a call about three weeks ago letting me know that she's, she's uh, dying. And I had to ask myself, what did I think about that? How did I feel about that? How should I feel about that? I mean, you should feel upset about it. So I think about it. What I realized was this. I was thankful. And that's what I told her. So I went to her and I said, thank you. I actually didn't go to say goodbye to steal a Doctor Who line, I, I went and said hello. I almost quit about four years ago. Everybody who does the convention circuit reaches a point where they have to ask themselves, am I willing to continue doing this? Well, if you are, then you have to jump in. You have to say, you know what? This is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. What is it going to take? Don't care what the rest of the world thinks because they're gonna tell you that being a professional master of ceremonies, it doesn't, it doesn't work, nobody does it. Go out and share with people the things that you find that you like. It'll do nothing but make your life more enriched. Because if you, if you want good things, if you want positive things, you have to get them. Because nobody else can tell what's inside you unless you tell them or show them. 